so we are really excited to have all of you here. Uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Ajay. I am one of the founding team members of Cryo. I will be joined by uh, uh, Sridhar, who is the co-founder of Cryo, who has in store for you today uh, your first doing experience. Uh, we're going to get started with uh, uh, the first stage of the Cryo Winter of uh, Doing uh, today itself. So I hope all of you are joining from your laptops. It's going to be a hands-on workshop, a hands-on session. Uh, and we'll give you more details about that in just a bit. All right. Uh, again, if you have not joined Slack, we have sent you a link to join. Uh, it's an email. It's uh, also in your SMS. Okay. So check it out. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it, there's an exciting community waiting to be there with you and interact with, with all of you. Cool. Um, all of you watching on YouTube today, right? Uh, why don't we start with a few simple, ex, uh, you know, simple tasks? Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us where you're from? Uh, which city are you in? Are you a student? Are you a working professional? Um, and tell us about any cool projects you have done in the past uh, and something that you're always uh, excited about, right? So let's go ahead, start those uh, introductions coming in. And uh, we'll wait for your peers, okay? We'll give them a couple of minutes, maybe another four to five minutes to begin, right? I mean, sorry, uh, three to four minutes, and then we'll start at uh, five minutes past uh, six, okay? All right, cool. So while you go ahead and do your introductions, I'll give you a quick introduction of the Cryo team and our backgrounds as well. Uh, Sridhar, who is the co-founder of Cryo, who will speak with you later today, he he comes from Google uh, and uh, he's been a developer through and through and uh, also did product management at Google before quitting, returning to India and uh, join and starting uh, Cryo, right? Uh, myself, uh, I, I am uh, also a developer through and through. I've got 16 years of experience in the tech industry, uh, been through a few startups, also an ex-Googler myself, uh, been at Google for about five, six years before returning to India, getting together with Sridhar and, um, you know, joining hands to build uh, what we think is the largest project-based learning platform uh, in India, right? So, uh, yeah, that's what, let's, let's go ahead and see. Yeah, let's, let's see all your introductions as well on, uh, on YouTube. Um, just a gentle reminder for those of you who are joining now, if you have not joined Slack, please go ahead and join. The links are in your email as well as SMS. We also have a Telegram group, okay? Uh, that way, even beyond winter of doing, we can build an amazing community. Uh, and Cryo, we really enjoy running these community programs and getting all the developers um, on, on board and running these amazing programs uh, so that we can engage with you. We really love interacting with developers. So when we have future events that come up, we will announce it on Telegram and we'd love for you to come back, participate, be, pri be part of the Cryo family. Uh, the, the running joke is that, you know, once, once you're within the Cryo family, you're always within the Cryo family, right? So <laughs> uh, it'll be amazing to keep in touch um, all the driven, motivated developers of the country, one place. I think it'll be amazing, right? Cool. So, uh, yeah, I already see a few uh, comments coming in on YouTube. It's amazing. Uh, I love doing this because you get to see what a widespread audience we have, and these are the these are the people who are going on this journey along with you. So it'll be and uh, amazing journey interacting with all of them, learning from different perspectives, uh, from different people across the country, across the world perhaps, right? So great. Yeah, quite a few people coming from outside the country as well. So that's, that's pretty good, awesome. All right, you know, I think we've waited long enough. Uh, it's time to get started. Uh, here is the uh, agenda for the day, okay? I'll introduce Cryo. For many of you, uh, you're hearing about Cryo for the very first time. 
uh, and you got excited by the winter of doing event. So we'll give you a short introduction about what Cryo is, uh, who we are, uh, and what we do, right? And then we'll talk about your Cryo winter of doing journey, what you will go through as part of uh, a Cryo winter of doing. Um, and then we've already told you that there are three stages. So we'll talk about stage one and give you a detailed plan, the graduation criteria of each stage and the benefits that you get, all right? Uh, and then some simple ways of working. How do we work during the program? At 6.45, Sridhar will take over and he will start the uh, HTTP session uh, today, right? So there's no rest uh, for all of you because, uh, you know, you. Uh, one thing I tell all the people who come to Cryo for the first time is you're perhaps a little spoiled, right? You sit down, you're sitting in a class watching a video uh, and how much of that do you really learn and how much you, how much of it do you really internalize? Uh, doesn't happen on cryo. This is probably one of the longer sessions, 45 minutes of a monologue that you're listening to. Right? But otherwise, it's very hands-on and Sridhar's HTTP session, I think you'll have a fantastic time. Um, so please make sure you join. Um, and with your laptops, follow along. It's a, it's a doing, it's a workshop. It's a real workshop. Okay, cool. All right, a quick introduction to Cryo. Here's how all of you are learning things today, right? Um, it resembles the, the guy standing there in front of the pool, uh, trying to learn how to swim. And guess what? He's reading a book written by the top swimmer in the world, Swimming 101, How to Swim. How many of you think this person is going to succeed in learning how to swim? Yeah? <laughs> what is the best way to learn to swim, right? If you were standing behind this guy, what advice would you give this person? Just jump in the pool, right? <laughs> that is the best way to swim. Actually, that is the only way to swim, learn to swim. Uh, you jump in the pool, you don't know how to do it. Your coach is standing there and the coaches are also incredible, right? They don't take you to the shallow end and throw you there. Mm -hmm. They take you to the deep end and throw you there and they're just standing and saying, okay, come on, make your way up. And that's how your swimming journey begins. Uh, I know at least that's how my swimming journey began. Uh, and a lot of my friends had to go through the same ordeal to learn how to swim. But guess what? You all survived. You learned to kick your feet. Uh, you move your hands, get outside, take that first breath of air and you're like, okay, I can at least survive. Uh, and slowly you start kicking your feet, you start using your hands, uh, you can survive in the water, you get comfortable in the water, and then you can swim. And then you want to get perfect about how to swim, you know, you want to make sure you move the hands outside the water. So it's learned in a very experiential way, in a practical way, in a hands-on way. You can never read a, video, uh, read a book, watch a video, and just do some simple tutorials to learn how to swim. That's not possible. It takes hard work, it takes discipline, it takes consistency, and more than anything else, it takes a lot of hands-on swimming to actually learn how to swim, right? If this is the best way to learn how to swim by actually diving in the water, what is the best way to learn how to build products? products perhaps used by millions of people across the world, right? It's by actually building them, right? Learn how to build a product and actually start building it and learn things along the way. You don't have to be an expert swimmer to start swimming, right? Everybody is a bad swimmer and then they get better. Similarly, you become a, you start with simple products, simple features, keep building it your way up. And then slowly you become one of these amazing developers working in some amazing company, right? The question is, see, I'm sure all of you have friends who work in some of these companies, Dropbox, Swiggy, Amazon, Google, Flipkart, uh, so many of these companies. And I'm sure you use all these products, right? How did your friends become these people uh, capable of building all these pro uh, products in these companies? Were they already very well versed with how uh, an Amazon or a Google works, how their places are structured, all of those things? Probably not, right? 
he started just like you graduated from college practice something did something to crack an interview okay that's all gray area nobody knows exact science of how that works but then they managed to crack that interview and they got in and then suddenly it's development it's not competitive coding anymore right uh but then your friend started with first of all downloading the code base everybody says hey welcome to the company here is our code base take a look just step through the code see how the functions are interacting with each other check the outputs here and there add a few debug lines and then figure out how the code is actually working the entire flow right so they only started learning one small thing at a time contextual learning right and when you understand when they understood how to build small features and enhancements they slowly added on to that became feature owners in maybe you know 6 to 12 months in about 2 to 4 years they become owners of features and you know a large set of features they become leads and all those things so but this learning is gradual the ramp up is gradual the learning is contextual and they grow up using the technology and tools within the company and they become well versed with all of those things right uh, until they become these independent problem solvers capable of building features used by millions of people right every single day delightful products what if all of you could get a similar learning opportunity right that's what we do at cryo right you don't have to be part of these amazing companies to go through the learning journeys that developers go through right you can come to us and we do something which is very similar we take you through the same learning journey so that you come out as competent strong confident developers who can join companies and be productive on the first day no ramp up required that's what we do Anyway, so let's talk about Cryo Winter of Doing. Okay, it's India's largest tech externship program for developers. Right, you have an opportunity for so many things. Working on challenging real-world projects. Okay, these are not toy projects suggested to you by your professor in college or something like that. Right, uh, this is coming from the industry. We've partnered with some of the most promising uh, you know high growth startups in the country is cred is reco jumbo tail vicara grow and slice uh if you don't know much about what they do i i'd highly recommend that you go check them out very amazing companies solving uh, some critical problems uh and setting the stage for an amazing growth uh, of not only their own companies but sort of related products as well right so we've partnered and collaborated with these companies and they have given out projects that they think are very useful not only for them but even for students as a learning experience or participants it could be working professionals who want to do it as a side project or a side internship right uh so pretty amazing uh we also have a, you know an exciting speaker lineup as well which i will talk about uh um, here are some of the projects now cred uh, uh it's uh, not just a credit how many of you have heard of cred right um they've created an amazing um, you know premier subscriber base of of people and right now it's about monitoring credit paying your bills and other things and their project is building a credit card management system right even thinking about it very exciting like you have to build a credit card management system from scratch the front end the back end and how it interacts together solving a real problem just the way you would in one of these amazing companies right now grow wants you to build a contextual chatbot that is useful for investors right say you want to get into stock trading but you don't know how to get started can you have a conversation with a bot and it gives you very relevant and a good rich experience of learning how to build uh, i mean learning how to invest but then the back end is really a chat bot giving you all that information now similarly jumbo tail is into uh, b2b commerce right uh, 
Now they want you to build a GPS based asset tracking protocol, very useful. Like uh, if you are a logistics company, where do you know where your products are? How do you estimate delays or how do you know that there are cancellations or insufficient products uh, or low inventory? So you're gonna actually build a GPS based asset tracking protocol uh, in collaboration with one of the Jumbo Tail projects or uh, cash flow management, right? Um, tracking all the transactions and figuring out what kind of cash flow your business has. So useful for small businesses. Uh, RECO, build an accounting integration service or an OAuth manager. Similarly, we have partnered with AWS who wants you to build a task orchestrator in a scheduler library. Uh, Slice, amazing company looking for you to build a doc library uh, along with an integration with their DigiLocker. Okay, which they provide. So, you know, um, it's great exposure for you. You get to understand how these companies think, how these companies work, uh, but not just at a superficial level, but you actually get to build some products. Uh, you're assisted by mentors from the industry. They're not necessarily from these companies, uh, but all of them are very competent programmers and developers in their own right, right? And they're gonna be here, uh, you know, volunteering, working with you all and helping you build these projects from scratch, right? Um, that's not all. You also get to interact with leaders from the industry. Uh, we have a, a, an amazing uh, a kickoff session with Bini Bansal, okay? He is the co-founder of one of India's um, probably largest uh, successes in recent times, uh, Flipkart. Right. So he's going to be here on Monday to uh, share his thoughts, talk about his journey, and hopefully inspire all of you, uh, you know, into becoming amazing entrepreneurs and developers and entrepreneurs and building your own companies. We also have a fireside chat with uh, Vivek Ravi Sankar, uh, who is the co-founder of one of the most uh, popular websites amongst all college students, as well as job seekers, Hacker Rank, right? So you have used Hacker Rank so many times before. You have thanked it, you have cursed it, you have loved it, you have hated it. Uh, but you, you can do all of those, but one thing you cannot do is ignore it, right? So Vivek is gonna be with us uh, to talk about uh, things related to uh, competitive coding and um, other things uh, about Hacker Rank. Uh, and then we have an expert chat with uh, Karan, who heads developer relations at uh, GitHub India. Uh, and he's going to talk about how GitHub has changed the landscape for open source contributions and public repositories, and how it has made Git such a very, such a popular version control system, uh, and how you can utilize all of this and up your development game. All right, so action packed, very rich set of uh, conversations uh, that I hope all of you will uh, attend and benefit from and interact with the guests. All right, what else? Is that all? Not quite. We do have some master classes from experts in the industry uh, at various stages of cryo winter of doing. All right, so stage one, here are some sessions. We might have a workshop on AWS. Uh, and stage two and stage three, we have further uh, more additional masterclasses for you to uh, really get a very good deep insight on many aspects of product development. Uh, mentoring from the tech community. Uh, we have a really vibrant set of mentors lined up. Uh, these people are not only very successful in their own development careers, uh, but have, are also very passionate of giving back Okay, they want to give back, they want to mold and mentor the next set of successful developers, industry leaders, right? Uh, and they're going to be working and interacting with you, uh, right? Uh, and last but not, not the least, and one of the most asked uh, <laughs> uh, benefits of Cryo Winter of doing is getting discovered by Cryo's hiring partners, right? Do well in these projects. Uh, and then you get a, an opportunity to present your work uh, in a very detailed technical fashion in front of a panel of hiring partners. Um, and who knows what can happen, right? 
anything is possible. <laughs> Sounds exciting. I hope all of you are excited. At least I know I know I am, and I, I speak for everyone at Cryo. We've worked really hard to put this together, and the industry partners are really eager. Um, when we approached them first, it was like, are you serious? I mean, you really think that people will go out there and spend their spare time to work on these projects? Uh, and then we said, you know, you'll be surprised. We've done uh, CSORT before, uh, and this time is completely different. We want to up the game uh, and cater to an audience that uh, already has some familiarity with web building web applications and throwing them that challenge, you know, and this is a way for you to sort of do an, uh, it's, it's as good as doing an uh, internship with some of these companies without having to be part of them, right? So amazing set of benefits, challenging projects. Okay, none of them are things that you can knock out in two, three days. None of the, none of, none of the projects are the ones you can copy off the internet either, right? They're all original projects. So it's going to be amazing. It, the discovery process for yourself, uh, the frustrations, the hard work, uh, and then the first time your code works, and then your integration works perfectly, and then you're able to demo it, right? It, it, uh, I'm sure you'll come out very strong uh, with a full sense of accomplishment. Uh, and then there are rewards to balance all of those things as well. Cool, right? At least I'm, I know I'm excited. I know I speak for everyone at Cryo. We are super excited to host all of you. All right, so a, a little, dial a little bit back, you know, how you'll go through this journey, uh, the externship journey. Um, we will start off with uh, a few uh, learning experiences from Cryo that we will give out um, to everybody, okay? Uh, we have something called micro experiences, okay? Micro experiences are uh, a Cryo's way of helping you take the avatar of a developer, in a leading company, and you go through the same learning journey that they went through. Okay, uh, like I, I talked about how your friends joined some of these companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Flipkart, right? And how they go through a learning journey where they take a few things initially and gradually build it up. That's what micro experiences are like. Uh, it's like a guided project. There's a tech lead who's there to help you out. There's existing code base, uh, in which you're trying to add new features that don't exist, right? There are no solutions. All the code you write is uh, being created for the very first time, right? Uh, and while you're writing this, you also have to go through a lot of supplemental learning yourself. Like you go to Stack Overflow, you search on Google, you read a few tutorials, you watch a few YouTube videos, but you come back and write your own code. So it's very similar to that, right? Uh, and that's what you will do. I'll give you a, a glimpse of what micro experiences are and how they will go about. Say you want to build a backend. Learn how to build a scalable distributed web backend, right? So what we'll take you through is a micro experience also known as a guided project called QEats, okay? Now QEats is a food ordering app, all right? Uh, you, you browse a list of restaurants, you select the one you want, you add some items from the menu to cart, check out, pay, right? So when you come to learn how to do backend development on Cryo, we give you a beautiful looking Android app that you can install on your phone. We have built a backend that works with this and the database and everything associated with that. But then there's a catch. In the back end, we have removed a few modules, okay? So when you open the app we've given you on your Android phones, you notice that the first screen, which is supposed to display a list of nearby restaurants is not working, right? And you come, you come to us and say, hey man, what happened? This is not working. And we say, I don't know. You're supposed to figure that out yourself, right? Of course, we give you help, we give you some instructions, we give you the tools required and a platform where you can debug all of these things, right? Uh, and then you slowly figure out that a request is being sent from the app to the backend. Uh, and the app is supposed to use this information, which includes the user's location and other details. Go to the database, fetch a list of restaurants and return it to the app. That functionality is, you guessed it right, missing <laughs> and that's what you have to write right 
And as you write this, you slowly go through all the details, read the existing code, see how the request is coming, how it is being processed, how to connect to a database, all the good stuff. Figure it out, write your code, test it, deploy it, commit your code, done. Then the first screen starts working. And then the rest of the app flow has multiple other interactions. I'll show you that now, right? So you open up the app, it takes your location, right? And sends it to the backend. The backend fetches a list of restaurants nearby, returns it to the app, okay? The user selects a restaurant, you have to fetch the menu and come back. You, you select items from the menu, add it to cart, make a payment, you check out and you're done. You can also implement a search feature for items instead of restaurants and it should return a list of restaurants and then select a restaurant and go through the order flow. Now, each of these interactions you saw has a corresponding backend implementation, which has not been implemented. Like you are going to do that and you need different skills at different stages of the project. So when you start, you just learn what you need at the initial stages to make the home screen work. Then you learn, okay, how do I get the menu API? What do I need to know? Are you using dummy data or are you going to use real data from a real database? Are you going to do unit tests? Are you going to check if your app handles scale? Like you eat, it's a food ordering app. What if everybody, like hundreds of thousands of people started placing orders just before an IPL game? Where are the bottlenecks in your app? Can you debug it? Can you make your SQL query more optimal? Can you cache something so that you don't have to make so many DB lookups? We gradually build it up. And at the end of it, you come out as a very strong, confident developer who has great independent problem solving skills, debugging skills, and all the things you need to become a successful and effective product developer. That is the goal, okay? Cool. So learning constructs, how, are, how am I going to do this by myself? Is it even possible? Does this even work? Well, you know, I didn't say it was going to be easy. <laughs> it's going to be challenging, but you will get all the help and resources you need, right? You put in the effort, we supplement with everything else that you need to make your learning journey effective. We start with bytes, okay? Bytes are small hands-on tutorials. They are designed to help you learn a concept in detail, but in isolation. For example, Linux basics or Git basics, HTTP. You learn only that particular concept in some level of detail, okay? Functional detail. In a hands-on way, it's not like sitting and watching a YouTube video 30 minutes and it just keeps rolling and rolling. No, not like that. You read a little, try it out, very hands-on. And Sridhar is going to give you a glimpse of that today, right? So just hang tight. Reminder, get your laptops, okay? Don't be lazy and just keep watching. Get your laptops. It's going to start, you know, 20 minutes from now. Boot it up right now. The second stage after bytes is micro experiences. Okay, these are the guided projects I talked about. You already saw Q Eats, right? So we give you code, there are blanks in between. You fill in the blanks, read the code and fill in the blanks. Initially it's 10, 20 lines of code, the blanks. And then slowly the blanks get bigger. You're doing hundreds of lines in multiple files in order to make a single feature work. Okay, so it, it, if you think the first couple of modules are easy, just wait till you get to, towards the middle or to the end of the micro experience or guided project and you'll face the heat, I'm sure, <laughs> right? Now, this is what you will do, okay? Do the bytes, get the basics, apply them in a guided project or a micro experience, and then you get to the externship phase, all right? The externship phase is the build out, okay? We call it build outs, but you, you know, internally, but now it's externships. And this is where you actually go through the actual project that is coming from our, uh, uh, from our uh, industry collaborators, okay? The ones that we just saw above, right? So three steps, bytes, micro experiences, and then the externship, which is stage three. All right, cool. So this is what you're gonna do. 
uh does this even work can anybody do it this way does this even make sense well if you have friends working in any of these companies flipkart visa rakuten geo go ibibo capillary vogo jambotel cred calera claimant urban ladder there's also phone pay we didn't have space to put it in there right so go talk to them and they'll all tell you that when they joined the companies they went through a cryo learning experience in the beginning we've been very effective in onboarding freshers when they join companies and transform them from those competitive coding people right into people who can write good quality well tested industry standard code solving real problems working with multiple files uh thinking about software design thinking about extensibility of the code what else might i uh, what other functionality might i have to add in the future taking all of that into account documentation and comments that all of you laugh about right anyway so all of these things right cool uh anyway so these companies love it they keep coming back to us like flipkart we've done it 3 years in a row now uh and the question they ask us is are there other people who have gone through these learning experiences that we can interview for hiring positions and that's why we're bringing it out to in in the open you know uh think about this as sort of uh talent sourcing at scale if someone has graduated from a cryo program then it bears with it a certain brand and a certain level of accomplishment that other companies really want you you become the sought after developers cool we have some testimonials um it's on our blog okay so you can go to blog.cryo.do uh and check it out uh they really like it uh people have gone through a range of emotions during their cryo journey they come up with a lot of excitement and then suddenly the amount of work they need to put in it hits them uh but then you know if you want to really achieve something meaningful you have to work hard very few people work hard and that's why very few people become super successful as well right of course there's luck and so many other factors that come in but at least you do whatever you can in your control and these many of these developers have done that and they've seen the fruits of their efforts amazing uh, success stories to share with all of you they're on linkedin they're also on our blog please go check it out okay All right so let's come to your cryo winter of doing uh, journey okay uh, please pay attention here there's a lot of detail i'll try to simplify it uh, so that you can consume it really easily okay what you're starting today is stage 1 all of you are eligible for stage 1 okay uh, all the participants that we've selected so far you've already got uh, uh, you know a letter stating that you have been selected for the stage uh congratulations we're really happy that all of you are here we're really excited to host all of you and all of you can get started with stage 1 the duration of stage 1 is 2 weeks we start today we finish on jan 17th the time commitment required from your end is anywhere from 10 to 15 hours very important okay this is not a race the first finisher has zero advantages over someone who finishes last as long as both of you finish it before jan 17th okay we are looking for depth we are looking for quality we are looking for thoroughness go through the material slowly carefully pay attention and get the full learning uh, learning outcomes the intended learning outcomes do well on that okay no race this is not a race so what will you learn we'll start off with some essential developer skills okay http rest apis linux git if all of these seem uh, you know alien to you or some things that you've done before but you need uh, you you don't mind a quick refresher then this is the right time to do it okay some of you might have done these in earlier cryo programs if you have already done it you don't have to repeat it again okay i repeat well i repeat <laughs> but you don't have to do these bites again okay we will consider it done 
uh, and all you have to do is do the next two things. We're going to have a workshop on uh, AWS, okay, which will be taken by uh, Cryo staff, right? So we'll go ahead and do one of those learning modules, how AWS works, create your own virtual machine, uh, and you know, deploy an existing application, and then you can share some of your learnings as well. Uh, and the last part, you get introduced to full stack development by going through one of our micro experiences. It's called Q Profile. Some of you have heard about it before, but basically it's your about.me page, just like about me. It's your personal profile page, your personal brand. You can create your own page, add your projects, add your bio, add you know, uh, some thoughts about yourself. You can share your hobbies, projects, pictures, all those things. And you could potentially share it with recruiters, your friends, all the good stuff, right? So Q profile is what you're going to do. To complete all of this, you have two weeks, okay? If you're thinking two weeks is long, you'll be surprised because it's gonna take a little bit of time, okay? 10 to 15 hours. So make sure you plan your work accordingly, okay? Those who finish stage one successfully and uh, will go ahead and uh, graduate to stage two, okay? There are no other shortcuts to get to stage two. You have to satisfy the stage one graduation criteria and only then you will be admitted to stage two. Stage two starts on Jan 18th and continues till uh, the 6th of February, okay? That is also two weeks. Okay, the time commitment required is slightly higher during this time. It's 25 to 30 hours, okay? And you're going to do a couple of things. One, uh, we give you some prep material to work on your coding skills. And then there's going to be an assessment at the end of it, okay? It's a coding assessment. You get some prep material and some uh, suggested resources that you can go through, but go through them and then take the coding assessment, okay? The second uh, part, we give you some, uh, you know, project preparation material. This is where you start getting your feet wet with actual core development work. Okay, so you'll do that, complete the project preparation material, and then you build a small mini project. Okay, nothing to be afraid of, uh, very achievable, and all the help that you need along the way. We realize that you know you're getting some of you might be getting started with your development journey, uh, and we are mindful of that, right? So you do the project preparation first, get the skills you need, and then complete the mini project. All right. We will also uh, we will also share some free resources. You know, like I said, for the coding and mini project assessments, whatever you need. All that will be shared with you. Go through it and complete these two things, okay? You have to do both in order to graduate and qualify for, qualify for stage three, okay? Make sense? Right, now the exact details, if you have questions, what is the mini project? What is the assessment? We let you know when you start stage two, okay? What material will you give me? When will you give it to me? We will let you know when you start stage two. Okay, so don't jump the gun. Don't worry about what is in stage two, stage three. Your focus today should be on stage one and finishing that, all right? Now, stage three is for uh, candidates who graduate from stage two with the right criteria, okay? The coding assessments will have a cutoff. The project also will have some testing and other things that you have to satisfy in order to graduate. If you make it past that, that's when you get to the meat of the program, the stage three. It starts on February the 13th, okay? And continues till March 27th. That is a total of six weeks, okay? Your time commitment is going to be about 80 hours, okay? At least to do the basic implementation of what is required in the extension. If you want to make it fancy and add some additional features of your own, this time could go up. But we estimate that to get a basic functionality of the externship projects, it will take you about 80 hours of time commitment. Okay. So what we'll do in stage three is this is where your projects are allocated. Okay. We will take your preferences into account. 
Okay, your first preference might not always be available, so be mindful of that. Uh, we'll also take a look at fitment. Maybe you're showing strengths in one area, uh, then we will tend to assign projects for you in that particular area. The fitment is also important, but don't worry about it too much, right? Because generally the prerequisites for all the projects seem to be somewhat similar. You're going to work in teams. It's not individual anymore. That brings with it amazing possibilities and some challenges as well, okay? Uh, because you have to really collaborate. Uh, if you're writing code uh, and somebody else is writing it with you, then you have to make sure that both of you have agreed on certain you know, uh, contracts. Okay, I'm going to publish data in this particular way so that they can also consume it in the same particular way. Otherwise, you know, it'll be like that joke where you have two railway tracks coming and joining like that, right? You don't want that. Anyway, uh, mentoring from the industry will also be there. Uh, there's going to be master classes. And then once you finish the project and only those who complete it will get an opportunity to demo the projects in front of the companies that gave the projects in the first place. Okay, that's going to be exciting and it could lead to some amazing, exciting and very happy outcomes, right? I don't have to tell you more about it. I'm sure you can put two and two together, okay? All right, so I'll give you even more details about stage one. I know this, like, this is the journey, okay? Three stage journey, exciting. I hope all of you uh, have a good grasp of what it means. Let's talk about stage one. Don't worry about stage two, stage three. It's out there. You first have to qualify. Stage one is what matters. Please focus right now. Okay. Here's what you'll learn. Five uh, bytes out of which one of them is also a session. Okay. So we'll do HTTP starting today. Okay. It's not what is HTTP? It is hypertext transfer protocol, which port 80? No, it's not like that. Very hands-on, okay? Uh, what, I'm sure you've heard of questions like this in an interview, right? What happens when you enter a URL in the browser on Chrome? What actually happens to service that request that you're making? What type of request is it? Uh, what's inside the request? What kind of different responses can you get? Okay, and those of you who have taken the HTTP byte, you should see our uh, uh, feedback and they love it. Okay, they've never experienced learning like this before. Next, we look at REST APIs. Okay, web applications communicate with each other largely using REST APIs. There are many other ways to communicate as well, uh, but REST APIs is a very, very popular way to do it. Okay, uh, and we're going to do some fun things like you know, you can send a tweet right from your Linux terminal. Right. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, from there we move on to Linux. How many of you have used Linux before? Comfortable with Linux? What kind of cool tricks and uh, things have you done on Linux? Well, have you done data analysis using the Linux terminal? Have you written some automation scripts? Well, if you haven't, or if you don't even know what that means, <laughs> then the Linux byte is where you will get a really good introduction to how these things work, right? Then we'll go on to cloud basics. We'll create a server in AWS. You'll deploy an app. We'll give you the app, okay? But your job is to figure out how to deploy it and get it into the hands of everybody in the world, right? That's what you're gonna do. And then um, version control, very important, Git. Uh, particularly important uh, if you're collaborating with other people. Okay, so you're going to get um, some um, initial introduction to Git in a very hands-on way. So these are the five things you will do as part of your uh, opening week. Okay, I mean, opening two weeks, the first uh, stage, okay, stage one. Uh, the next part and the final part in stage one is also to work on a micro experience. Okay, it's called Q profile. Now, Q profile is an amazing profile that you create on the internet. Like it's MySpace, or it's like your Facebook page, but without all the comments and activity. You can, like I said, you can share your projects, your bio, uh, a link to your CV, your contact details, hobbies, a link to all your professional portfolios, all of the good stuff, right? So you're gonna build this um, yourself. We give a lot of the code, okay? This is basically testing the waters. You do a little bit of HTML, a little bit of JavaScript, 
little bit of CSS, right? Uh, and then a little bit of uh, React, a little bit of Node.js. You'll figure out a little bit about how to deploy an application. <laughs> Everything is a little bit, because this is just a flavor, okay? We wanna see if you can take something like this, read through it, follow some simple instructions, uh, and then build your own profile. And you get something really nice to take away, this profile itself, right? Something that will stay with you, something you can keep, right? So you're going to do all of this. Some of the details are on the left side. You can go through it, right? We'll also share these details on Slack. Uh, but, you know, this is an introduction to full stack architecture. We'll do this as a workshop, okay? And the timelines for the workshop we'll share later, okay? We get together, we do this together and see uh, how far you can get here, okay? So you're gonna get plenty of help. It'll be a very enjoyable uh, process. And I think you'll really enjoy the learning experience uh, through all of this as well, okay? So this is what you will do as part of stage one. Uh, here's a detailed plan. I want you all to memorize this right now. <laughs> no, you don't have to, we'll share it on Slack, okay? All the details will be shared on Slack. You just have to go through it later and make sure you attend all of these things. Okay, cool. Um, there's also going to be a parallel bonus contest. Okay, this has nothing to do with stages, stage one, two, three, doesn't matter. Okay, it's called the share your learning challenge. The cryo winter are doing share your learning challenge. Okay, it's a bonus contest. Uh, you know, we, we'll have some additional fun learning activities. How many of you completed the Sherlock activity? It's going to be similar to that. Uh, it'll only get more interesting, right? So you'll do that. And then you write a blog about that activity. Okay. And then you submit a link to the blog. Okay. Submit it to us. Uh, and then we'll evaluate. And then we'll, you'll get some attractive giveaways. Uh, Amazon, Echo Dots. We have t-shirts uh, for the winners of the contest. Okay. Uh, those, those of you who complete these activities will be eligible. Uh, so that's what we're rooting for. And this has nothing to do with your stages, right? It's just so fun. It's a bonus contest. Do it when you're bored. Do it when you're excited. Do it whenever, okay? But please do it. I think there's some really uh, amazing giveaways to be won. Uh, so go ahead and do this as well, okay? Cool. So step one, graduation st uh, criteria and benefits. Uh, here's what's mandatory, okay? You have to complete all the bytes. HTTP, REST, Linux, Git. It's due on 15th Jan. Uh, the Q profile is a bonus, okay? So if you do this, the Q profile, uh, it'll add value, okay? To your application towards uh, stage two, right? So go ahead and do this. Uh, and then if you can do some of these share your learning activities, we'll factor all of this in into uh, your stage one graduation. Be some benefits as well, right? You get a completion certificate. Everybody who finishes stage one, you get a really nice, beautiful certificate. You've already seen Cryo's designs everywhere. Uh, you get your name on this certificate designed by Cryo, right? It's gonna be amazing. Uh, and then you qualify for stage two. Uh, we have some extra benefits as well, okay? Uh, if you are interested in taking up any of our premium programs, which are paid, right? Uh, we'll give you a scholarship that you can use anytime in the next six months. Okay, the scholarship is valid for six months. Usually our scholarships are valid for one week and you have to start soon. Uh, but this time, you know, six months of validity so that you have time to finish the externship and then come back uh, and consider our premium courses if you're interested. Of course, try your goodies for selected winners of the challenge. All right. So uh, I don't have to tell you about this because Slack is buzzing. The activity is incredible. Um, all the help that you get will be within the community, okay? Uh, they, we will recognize people who help each other, okay? If you're helping your peers, we will recognize you as well. There are goodies to be won even there, okay? So community participation will be appreciated and recognized, okay? So post your questions on Slack, help others with their questions, okay? Uh, and then you can win these amazing uh, cryo badges that you can share. I'll show you those right away. There are some guidelines on Slack, okay? No spamming. We will block people who spam. I'm serious, you know? Who wants to see the same thing again and again? I've seen some of those things. 
not cool, okay? We'll kick you out. And then you can come back with a different name, but this time you behave, okay? Uh, and then use threads, okay? I've seen people starting comments one after the other. Guess what, guys? There are threads. Keep everything within a context, okay? Very useful. There are separate channels for different bytes. If you go to the welcome channel and ask a question about HTTP, not cool, man, not cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, you get the idea, right? So that's how you get help on Slack. Uh, it's community driven. Uh, cryo, will, uh, cryo mentors might be there to oversee a few things, but there's 10,000 of you, it's super hard for us, okay? So help each other out, all right? Beautiful badges, who wants them? <laughs> Disciplined rooster for people who put in a regular time, stick to deadlines and finish everything in a very staged manner according to the uh, deadlines that we've published. Altruistic elephant for people who help each other. You know, we look at Slack, we look at the kind of help you're giving each other and we will recognize, okay, maybe you write a beautifully uh, beautiful answer which explains something in very good detail. Uh, we will recognize this over time, okay? Um, there are people who, who will find it difficult, okay? You have trouble, you're asking questions, you're trying to get as much help as you can, uh, but then you never give up. Relentless B, right? Uh, there's also rapid cheetah, people who finish fast, but we will also look at uh, the other qualities, like are you doing your work in a good way or is it just random haphazard work and you know, uh, trial by error or just keep trying and something works. No, those things we will not recognize, but rapid cheetahs for that. Uh, and then unstoppable bull for people who are doing everything right and will not stop until everything is done. Cool. All right, cool. We also have some lovely friends joining you along this journey. You've already been introduced to them on Slack. Uh, interact with them. They have some fun things. They have insightful things. They have techie things to share with you. Uh, I think they'll keep you some good company throughout the journey. Uh, and we're so happy to bring them to all of you. I hope you really enjoy the cryo buddies as well. Okay. All right, cool. That's it folks. You know, I'm going to stop uh, here. Uh, there are questions that uh, we're going to take on Slido. Uh, I will answer some of the most pressing questions. Uh, and the rest of them we will take offline, okay? Uh, I will also welcome Sridhar here at this time, who will be here with us to talk about the next couple of stages. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I will answer a few questions. Are you able to see my screen? I think you will be. Anyway. Okay, in stage two, there are time coding tests and mini project. If I'm not good at DS or algo, will I be eliminated based on that? Uh, we, we actually will give you learning resources to help you practice and prepare before you take the coding assessment, okay? And you have a good two weeks to do it. So uh, I think you'll be able to ramp up. We're not unreasonable. We won't ask you questions on dynamic programming and all those unreasonable things. We're looking for people who, can, who have a basic competence in coding. And with the two weeks of preparation time you have, I think you'll be able to make it. Don't worry about it. Uh, what are front-end and back-end languages used by startups? Um, they, I mean, every startup is different. Okay. We'll give you those details on Slack. I think this is a good question for Slack. We can take it there. Okay. Uh, which languages will be used in various stages of backend, um, like in stage one and two stage one is almost language agnostic, except for Q profile, which is JavaScript. Okay. If you don't know JavaScript, it is very easy to pick up. And what we have is very basic JavaScript. We'll be happy to share some resources to help you get started. Um, criteria for passing stage one, I think we've already answered that. Uh, do, I'm a Windows user. Do I need to install uh, Linux to complete stage one? Uh, no, you don't have to do it. Uh, if you already have a Linux machine, you could use that, but you don't need it, okay? Everything, all the work you do will be from within a browser and uh, you will be using Gitpod uh, to set up your uh, virtual machines, the Kubernetes clusters actually. So you will set up Gitpod and use that for all your work, okay? Uh, will we get offered jobs in partner companies uh, after cryo winter of doing? You could be, you never know, 
right? If you have built an amazing project and you hit it out of the park in the demo and have a smashing demo, why will they not call you? They want you, right? And that's that's one of the primary reasons uh, they, the, that, that the partners are here as well, okay? They want to discover hungry talent, self-driven, passionate talent who are willing to go one step beyond and achieve and build all these projects and prove that they are really interested in a career and development. And they would love that. They would love that, right? Uh, will the selection be based on competitive coding in the last stage? Uh, I think I've already answered that question. Uh, and just to be clear, no. You have to do those coding assessments, but I don't know if that's competitive. Like time-wise and all that doesn't matter, right? You have Everybody gets the same amount of time. Finishing early has no benefits, okay. Yeah, Ratna here. Um, uh, what I mean to say, I, I don't mean to say wait till the last day and finish. Okay, um, do it as quickly as you can, right? Uh, that way you have enough time, right? Uh, if you are lagging behind or if you have to brush up certain concepts, you will have time to pick those things up as well. All right. Uh, I have uh, done some bites before. Will they be counted? Yes. Um, I'm using a company laptop, can't install Linux. You don't have to, everything is in the browser. All you need is a Chrome browser. How many people are selected out of 10,000? We'll make that announcement on Slack. Uh, general question, do you believe one can get a job without DS algo? No, you can't. Unfortunately, no. It's not required to do the job, but it's required to get the job. The interview rounds, one of them will be DS algo. Um, that is the sad truth and you have to put up with it, right? Anyway, all right. So, you know, uh, let's switch to a few recent questions. Um, any chance to get one-on-one -on -one mentorship? In the third stage, yes. In stage three, you will get uh, mentorship. You will be assigned an industry mentor who will work with you throughout the project, okay? Will we be taught to use frameworks uh, in, uh, in stage two, to some extent you might be, okay? But otherwise we're expecting some of you to uh, know uh, some of those things as well. Uh, in stage two, we will give you some of the, some help that you need. If you ever need some additional help, uh, that's what Cryo does, right? We have, we have some premium programs, feel free to connect and use that, okay? Um, where will we get these stages? Dude, come on. I just explained the whole thing. Anyway, uh, is there a minimum age? No, there is no minimum age. There is no maximum age either. Okay. Three to 99, just like those Lego boxes you get, right? Uh, I mentioned two weeks, but it says nine to 15. Okay. That's probably one week. I probably goofed up. Uh, don't go by the, the, the dates are correct. Okay. My estimation of one week versus two weeks. Please ignore that. The days we've published are accurate. Okay. Um, is it necessary to use the code base provided by Cryo to build the portfolio? Uh, yes, you have to. Uh, that's, that's part of the micro experience. All right, folks. I think most of the questions have been answered. Now, this is not, uh, this is not the last opportunity uh, you have uh, to ask questions. We will, uh, we will share, uh, we'll start a thread on Slack, post your questions on Slack and we will respond right there. Okay. Uh, do we need to pay for anything? No, the entire externship journey is 100% free of cost. Your effort is the only um, investment. Okay. There are no payments. It's a 100% free of cost uh, program. Uh, yeah. Uh, why a team of two, three or four is better. I think it, you're meeting each other for the first time. Many of you might form teams for the first time with strangers. It's easier to reduce variables. Okay, so that's about it. All right, folks, we'll discuss some of these things. These are all questions for later stages. Uh, I think for the first stage, we have uh, answered all the questions. I'll go ahead and invite uh, Sridhar. Sridhar, are you there? Yes, Ajay, I'm here. Hello. Are Are you able to hear me fine? Yeah, I think I think I'm, I think I'm good. 
All right. So all of you, please welcome Sridhar. Sridhar is the co-founder of Cryo. Uh, very passionate guy, a good friend. And welcome, Sridhar, over to you for getting started with HTTP. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Ajay. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, and... Sridhar, I'm not able to hear you. Only your audible. Hello? Hello? Okay, he is audible. All right, yeah, thank you, Sridhar. Yeah, you're fine, audible, thank you. This one. All right, thanks a lot, Ajay. Uh, thanks for walking through the uh, initial part of the flow. Um, I'm Sridhar J. Chandran, and I'm one of the co-founders of Creo. Uh, before uh, starting Creo, uh, I was with Google as a product manager. And uh, before that, I started my journey as an engineer as well. Uh, mostly working on uh, vertical scaling to start off my uh, start my career in NetApp as a storage company. So primarily working on the TCP IP stack, which is based on FreeBSD kernel, uh, like how to actually scale uh, threads to work on say 16 core, that kind of stuff. And then I moved to uh, Google. There I worked on distributed systems backend, which is otherwise called horizontal scaling. Right there, you write code to essentially run it on say 10,000 of machines. Right, I was with the social backend team. And uh, we started Creo a couple of years back. And uh, so far, we have been having an awesome journey. And uh, all these uh, community events like Creo Winter of Doing, uh, the Seesaw that we did initially, the launch program that we did last year, it just like keeps us going. All right. So glad to meet you all, all of you guys again. And today, I'm going to start off with the HTTP Byte, which is going to be the first hands on exercise in your Creo Winter of Doing journey. All right. Let's get started. So roughly, I'm going to spend about uh, 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes max, where I'll quickly help you understand what is HTTP. From there, I'll also make sure that you get introduced to the platform and then you'll be able to get started. All right. Okay. So what is HTTP? So every single one of you at some point in time, I'm guessing would have got this question in an interview or you would get it in the future. All right. So when you type www.google.com, what exactly happens? All right. So you might give a very superficial answer or go deep into the networking stack and give a amazing answer, right? As soon as you're done with the HTTP byte, I'm fairly sure that you have, your answer will actually have a lot of depth, all right? Which protocol powers the entire internet, right? You probably know as HTTP. What is this error? Code 500. You're, you're probably used to seeing a lot of these errors on when you visit web pages, right? 404, uh, 500, right? Unauthorized, 401, right? So what do these exactly mean? Right? You might be making, making some guesses as to, okay, hey, these are server errors or these are client errors. Let's learn them the right way. Finally, uh, you are probably all uh, aware of this whenever you make an online payment and you try to resubmit, press the back button and then try to resubmit, they're going to warn you, right? If you're going to do again, maybe there's a chance for you to make duplicate payments, correct? Now, we'll start by understanding what is HTTP. So this is Cryodo page, okay? I'm going to go to something called the Chrome Developer Tools, okay? I right click and then go to inspect. This is called the Chrome Developer Tool or all the browsers, right? Like you take Firefox, Safari, all of them will have some sort of a development tool. So it's a very powerful uh, tool, if, especially if you're a front-end developer. And today we are going to use this to understand some of the things that is happening behind the browser. All right, okay. Let me quickly reload this page, okay? And I've gone to the network tab, which essentially contains the list of all network calls that the browser is making. All right, if you have to think of what I'm doing with the browser, I'm trying to connect and then get the data or send some data to a different server on the internet, correct? So over here, you can see that there's this cryo.do, correct? And uh, it's actually doing a URL request at this particular occasion, HTTPS colon www.cryo.do, which is what I typed in the browser, correct? Now, it is, it's a HTTP protocol, and then it is doing a GET request. As you would go through the byte, you would understand that there are several different HTTP verbs. One of them, the most common one is called GET. GET essentially means, hey, 
there is a server out here i'm going to get the data from there all right and you can see that there is a status code of 200 which means that i was able to successfully get the page back and then there's this something very fishy about here right you see that there is a remote address did i ever type any ip address anywhere if you have to carefully observe i only said www.creo.do so where exactly this ip address came from right to answer that you have to actually understand what is dns lookup i hope you are able to see my terminal what i'm going to do is do a command called dip okay which is essentially going to get me the dns response okay for a particular name so i'm going to do this dig cryo.2 okay what it is doing is it is talking to something called the domain name server all right so all of your isps right whether you are uh, having a act or bsnl or airtel whatever connection you have whoever provides you with the internet they would probably also be having some dns servers okay and what your browser will do is essentially say okay hey you know what i have to talk to this guy cryo.do okay i don't know which ip address i have to reach out to okay immediately your operating system goes and finds out from the isp as to or the dns server that isp provides as to okay hey if i have to reach cryo.do which ip address i have to talk to all right and as you can see the response back from the dns server is you can reach cryo.do on any of these ip addresses not just one right you can reach on 54 230 90.115 or 90.53 90.11 right and this might keep changing as well all right if you try to ping google.com you will see that like every five minutes or 10 minutes it might actually change all right so you can see over here that the remote address that i am in this case connected to is 54.230.90.11 which is the third entry over here. And then the next thing comes into picture. There's something called 443, right? So what is this 443? We never type any protocol or any port number over here, right? If you are aware of how TCP IP works, there are two parts to it. There is this IP and then there is also a port number. This port number corresponds to the protocol HTTPS, all right? If you're using HTTP protocol, then this would show up as 80 okay i'm going to show you that as well i'm going to do the same thing open the network tab in a different part and then going to type pizza.com okay and when i type that you can see that this is a http request and it's also a get request i got back 200 and the port number that i'm connecting to is 80 okay so this is no different right from me typing this okay so which means by default browsers connect to 80 if it is a http request if it to connects to 443 if it is a https request and you can also override that let's say if i do 8081 it is going to or any port number over here it might also try to connect to that port number all right okay let's come back over here now if you were to see the response that I got back from the cryo server, right? The browser has initiated a connection to this remote IP, to this product, the particular port, and then I'm getting some sort of a response back. Let's understand what the response is. It says that content type is text slash HTML, right? Which means that the server returned back to me some sort of a HTML content, all right? And you can find out a lot more details. For example, what server are we using, right? If you go here, it says Amazon S3. There are a lot more things that you can actually go through. It's, it's a very useful thing for you to understand. All right, I'm going to the response tab now. We saw that the content that was returned by the server was HTML, which is what you are actually seeing over here. You can see all the tags, right? Like whatever you know as a HTML tag, you can actually see all those over here. For example, let's say that I want to search for something specific over here, right? Whatever is there in the website, Let's say I want to search for, I have completed multiple boot camps. I'm going to search here. I have completed. You'd see that whatever I'm actually typing is actually part of the response. In other words, the HTML response that I got back from the server is what is getting rendered beautifully over here. All right, after applying the styles. Okay. Now, this is how, this is what happens. The entire cycle, you issue a, type a name 
right? And then it goes and figures out from the DNS server which IP I have to talk to, talks to the specific port, and then the server returns back the data. Okay, let's come here. Now, this is what we started off with, www.crave.do on your laptop, and then it talked to the DNS server, got the IP back, and the port number is 443 because it's a HTTPS request. It's a GET request, right? We are getting the data, and it went to the server, Cryo server, which is hosted on Amazon, right? Which is in cloud, right? And the server responded back, giving an HTML output, and once the response came back, my browser rendered that. All right, so this is how the end-to-end -end flow works. Now let's move on to the next step. You will be starting off with HTTP byte, which is going to be your first of the learning tasks on Creo platform as a part of a Creo winter of doing. And as a part of the HTTP byte, you will first start off by visiting flipkart.com using the Chrome developer tools the way that I showed right for Creo do website. You will understand the HTTP request response as a part of your exercise. All right, that will be the first task that you will do. Post that, you will go to the, uh, you will understand some of the things around what is a get request, what is a post request, what is a put request, what is the difference between post and put, when should you use get, when should you use post, right? You will understand some of these things, again, completely hands on. You will move on to understanding some of the status codes like 200, 301, 404, 500, what do they exactly mean, right? And you will pick up something called a curl, okay? Curl is a command line utility which you can actually use from Linux terminal or Windows terminal and it can mimic the exact behavior of your browser, okay? And finally, in almost all interviews, right, they might ask you, hey, okay, you are talking so much about HTTP requests. You are talking about how the browser talks to the server, gets the data back, right? Now, which protocol is it working on top of? It, and you say, okay, hey, you know what, it is this, that is that, but can you actually say that confidently, right? It works on top of TCP, of course, but how do you prove that? As a part of one of the milestones, what you're going to do is create a TCP connection, okay? A bar TCP connection, and then you are going to create the HTTP request on top of it, send it to see the answers, all right? Okay. Now we'll get started with onboarding onto the platform. A fairly self-explanatory thing, but I'd just like to walk you through so that you're kind of completely clear on how to go about doing things on Cryo platform. All right, okay. So first step, of course, go to cryo.do page, click on sign in. I hope all of you have done the onboarding flow yesterday. If not, please make sure that you complete it. I'm gonna choose one of the accounts. Seems like all of you are trying at the same time. That's good. It's taking a bit of time to authenticate me. Just a couple of more seconds. By the way, uh, you should be having a Gmail ID for you to be authenticated. And if you don't really have a, if you have not created the application using Gmail ID, please share the Gmail ID. We have already sent a form. Please make sure that you specify which ID and your Gmail ID to you'll be logging into as well as the original ID you have applied with. Okay, that way we'll make sure that it is enabled for you. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Seems like it's very, very slow. What are you guys doing? If in case, okay, if in case I'm not able to show the demo, we are going to share an offline video where we'll just like quickly walk you through how the whole flow works. Okay, so don't worry about it.
so that's why we always have a recorded video like readily available meanwhile one more time yeah all right so at last so this is what you would see this is the onboarding flow and i've applied for the cryo winter of doing decent coding skills what is the goal uh switch to a better job okay i want to upgrade my tech skills let's see i want to do things and so on as i'm bored of seeing videos and adding them to my resume anybody adding playlist google sorry youtube playlist to your resume anyone okay so i've already joined the slack so i'm going to skip otherwise please make sure that you join the slack channel i think uh, there were some issues with respect to slack slack is not uh, it, it has some expiry related stuff we'll probably figure out a way but for now please uh, email us back if in case you have any issues with respect to slack all right okay let's get started okay i don't know why i'm being asked the same thing again okay here you go so you are going to see the screen where it shows you ongoing activities cryo winter of doing stage 1 i'm going to click on this and you will see that i can start the program okay so i'm starting the program it will take a couple of seconds it just like a if there is heavy load it might take a couple of minutes just like try refreshing one to two times if there are any issues think uh, system is struggling with load right now that's good okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly walk through the uh, i'll do it from a different id okay so what you have to do after this is that then it will say start program and then it will show you something called http byte i'm going to show it from a different id right now okay sorry about that oh my god you guys are bringing the platform down now by the way don't worry Ah, uh, we'll be taking some of these questions on Slack and make sure that we'll get you started in the next hour or so. Okay, just in case anybody have difficulties, just like we try a couple of times, and then in the next half hour we'll be able to resolve it. Okay. still having problems okay okay folks i'll just like try it for a minute or so more and if it doesn't work i'm going to actually uh just like get start i'll just like share a video link okay but i'm getting started guys right? i'll try one last time
no luck. Okay, we also use uh, Google Firebase. I'm not sure exactly where the problem is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the rest of the stuff and then we'll help you understand how to get started on the platform. Okay, with a video that we'll share right away on the Slack channel. So please make sure that you are actually enrolled on the Slack channel. Okay. All right. So what is the eventual goal for us? After you finish the HTTP byte, okay, uh, you are going to pick up some of the very important like uh, thing about uh, how the whole entire internet works. And our goal, once you are done with HTTP byte, is that if in an interview, okay, if ever in an interview setting, somebody asks what happens when you type, say, www.google.com or creo.com in a browser, right? If you ever get such questions, we believe you would be able to answer that in the best possible manner because you have got so much of hands-on exercises, right? You have gone deep understanding things right from building your own HTTP request on top of TCP sockets, right? So you'd be able to ace the interview in a great way and then you'll be setting yourself for the next set of rounds. All right, that's about it. Uh, we'll share the getting started uh, deck on the Slack channel. So you'll be able to get all the other details about onboarding over there. All right, see you all on Slack and then wishing you a very happy journey in the next few weeks. And then both Ajay and myself will be here to take any further questions or we'll be wrapping up the call. Okay, Ajay, anything you want to add? Yeah, just a couple of things. Thanks a lot, Sridhar. I think uh, uh, it's amazing what you guys are doing with the platform, right? Amazing amount of load, which is which is good news. And uh, we'll share a we'll share a, a video, okay, to help you get started. But you don't really need the video as well, okay? If your uh, if your page is not loading, just give it a little bit of time. Try it out again later. And I think uh, the the platform is self-explanatory. I'm sure all of you will figure it out. Right. So very important. Okay. If you did not listen to anything so far, I'll just quickly summarize what you need to do next. Okay. Go to cryo.do our homepage, sign in and get started with the program. Okay. Check the activity board uh, and the activity board will take you to whatever you need to do. Okay. You have two weeks to finish stage one. You have to complete five bytes and you should finish Q profile, okay? So these are the things that you have to do. Start with the HTTP byte uh, today, try to wrap it up. We will have additional sessions later on to introduce you to some of the, uh, to some of our uh, remaining, like the REST and Linux and Git and AWS, we'll have supplemental, uh, either we'll have supplemental sessions if we see a need for it, uh, or we'll figure things out, okay? All right, folks, uh, I think I think we'll end on that note. Um, Ratina and Soam have started a thread on Slack where you can ask any additional questions you have and we'll respond to all the questions there. All right, see you all. Uh, get started with HTTP and try to complete it within the next couple of days. All right, that's about it. Shida, any other parting messages, wishes, good luck? <laughs> Uh, we hope uh, we'll be able to bring you the same kind of experience you had like our past community events and looking forward to interact with you all over the next few weeks. Okay. Thanks a lot. Excited to have you all on board. All right. Thank you. Thank you.